value bindings are a way for you to kind of capture values that you're evaluating the switch statement and use them in different case blocks. So this is a lot of information, but I think you'll understand as we walk through an example here. So again, we have this variable dog info, which is a tuple. Its first value is an int of three, and its second value is a string called Fido. So we do the switch statement on dog info, and in our first case, you'll see here, this is our first value binding. And we're essentially saying, whatever the first value is in the tuple, assign it to this variable age. And then the second half here is just as in any normal uh, switch statement case on a tuple, we're saying does the second value in the tuple equal Fido? And you can see here it does, right? So we pass in the value three into this variable age. And when you use a value binding, any value is accepted. So that instantly becomes true. Um, and then Fido matches up with Fido, so this is a true case, and so this little chunk of code is run. And you can see that here in the right output. And the cool thing about the value binding is because we did this variable age, we can use this variable age inside of this chunk of code, and we did it to create this string that says my dog Fido is prints out the age years old. Now this variable age right here won't exist except for in this block of code right here. Um, so, I mean, later down here, if we try to do something like, um, uh, we'll do a print line of the, well, let's just try and print line age, right? Uh, if we do that, you're going to see we get an error because the lifespan of this variable only exists inside of, in fact, this little case statement. So anyways, uh, another example, um, to show here, so if if we make these names not match, instead of doing Fido, let's do Sean. Um, and we let's make the age five, so you can see here, five and five match up, and then Sean is passed in the variable name, and we print out my dog, Sean, which is in this name variable, is seven years old. And then the last case, uh, you'll notice this is cool. We don't have a default case, which, I mean, is kind of the law that you need to have a default case, but this here is the exact same as the default case. So we're saying because of these two value bindings, whatever the first value in the tuple is, assign it to this variable age. And whatever the second var variable in this tuple is, or second value in this tuple is, assign it to this variable name. And that accepts every case. There's no case in, when, in which this could not be called, right? And so because of this, you don't need a default case. This is essentially replacing this. So if I change the age here to four, so now this case don't ma doesn't match up, this one doesn't, you can see this last case is just like a default. Uh, it catches everything, and I use the two variables that I've created here, name and age, to create this new string. And with value bindings, you can do constants rather than variables. Um, it makes no difference. Uh, but just remember the lifespan of these things. So for example here, this variable age and this constant name will only exist right here. As soon as we get to this next line, uh, they're no longer accessible.